Back in 1892, the U.S. military adopted the 3040 Krag Jorgensen rifle. And a few years later, Teddy Roosevelt and his band of Rough Riders carried it up San Juan Hill. You may be cool, but you'll never be Teddy Roosevelt cool. We've noticed a large percentage of our viewers have not subscribed. So if you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications. It's free and you can always change your mind later. Thanks for joining us on Shoot of the Series. My name's Ed Thorell from Firearms Education and Training, and we want to thank all of our viewers and subscribers for sticking with us. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell so you never miss an episode. Today, we've got a very special treat. We're going to be able to shoot the 3040 Craig Jorgensen, and this has been on my bucket list for a very, very long time. Um, now, the rifle's got some history. This particular one in front of us is well over 100 years old. And it was designed by a pair of Norwegians by the name of Ole Krag and Eric Jorgensen. And it was adopted by the military in 1892. It was the first time that the U.S. had ever bought a foreign design. And about a half a million of these were made at the Springfield Armory and they made uh, quite a bit of them over a 12-year period up until about 1904 when this was actually replaced by the uh, 1903 Springfield, um, something that we've done earlier. Now, this is a repeating bolt-action rifle. Every time you pull the bolt back and then move it back forward, it's gonna cycle a fresh round into the chamber. The safety is located right here on top. Now, the, the safety, if it's in the up position and it blocks the rear sight, that's a reminder that the safety is on. So you would move the safety out of the way and when you can look through the sights, you're good to go. Now, one of the big features of this was the fact that right attached to the receiver, it had this little door that opened up. And right here into this little door, you could basically just drop the rounds in one at a time. And when you close the door, it would automatically line everything up and it was ready to fire. The beauty of this design is that you could top off the magazine between, between shots and leave a loaded cartridge in the chamber if you needed to use it in a hurry. Now, it also came with what's called a magazine cutoff, which became standard practice to use later on with the 03 Springfield as well as the Lee Enfield. And what the magazine cutoff did was it allowed you, when the cutoff was off, to prevent the four rounds in the magazine from being used and you basically loaded it one at a time. The only time that you would use those four that were held in reserve was in case of an emergency. Say the infantry was charging at you and you needed four fast shots, you could flip over the magazine cut off to the on position and then you could shoot as fast as you could cycle. So it fired a 200 grain projectile loaded with 40 grains of the new improved smokeless powder. One of the things that with cartridges is prior to the beginning of smokeless powder being used, if you had say something like a 4570, the 45 would mean the caliber of the bullet and then the 70 would be the amount of grains of black powder. But with the 3030 as well as the 3040, they were going to a smokeless powder. But that's where the designation's a little bit sticky. Um, with these, you're not using the black powder, you're using the new and improved smokeless powder. So it would be 30, uh, it would be a um, 30 caliber bullet with 40 grains of smokeless powder. All right, so I wanna show you how to load this and then we're gonna to get to it in just a few minutes. Now, the beauty of this, like I said, is you can drop these in just one at a time. Which, you know, if in the heat of battle, that makes a big difference because uh, what that means is, 
is you don't have to be necessarily terribly careful to get the job done. You can just drop them in. All right, I'm going to put my ears on. And we're going to get right to it. So as I cycle the, the bolt and go all the way to the back, it picks up the top cartridge. As I go forward, come on, it enters the, enters the chamber. Now you can see that the safety is in the off position since it's not blocking the, the rear sight. So you're going to want to put the post, the top of the post, right in the very center of the aperture or the peep sight. Be a little more careful this time. First time firing a 30 40 Craig, I got a little bit rattled. And that happens first time you pick up a, a new gun. You may not hit it on the first shot just because you're trying to get a gauge for it, how it's going to kick, how it's going to handle. And then you settle down and start having a little bit of fun with it. And the uh, recoil on this is very similar to about a 308. And what I wanted to show you is demonstrate how we could top this all off. Hmm, barrel band came loose. So just wanted to show you again as we did that. And when you're dealing with an antique rifle, you know, there's things you just got to keep an eye on. That being one of them. So we'll just top this off. See if I can make a little bit of music. Chamber check. Got one in the, in the tube. Everything's secure. We're good to go. This thing is highly valued by collectors who really enjoy the smooth action. Gotta love it. Uh, I think we got one or two more in here, so we'll use it up. Because why not? Damn, I could do this all day. Two rounds left. No point in letting those just sit around. Settle down. Soft and easy on the trigger. There we go. Good strong finish. All right, and she got a little warm too. Anyway, we're safe, we're clear, and it's also time for Shooter Shout Out. Yeah. Before we go any further, I wanna give a great big, super, super Shooter Shout Out to my buddy Ryan, who let us use the 3040 Crag. You know, this came from his grandpa. Um, this is an heirloom, and it's been a dream of mine to shoot the, the Crag for years. And Ryan, you really helped me check that box, and I can't, can't thank you enough. So shooting the 3040 Crag was a dream, and um, thank you much. We do appreciate it. So. Let's get to the other shooter shout outs. And the first one goes to Theodore Castro. Um, and he really liked the Glock versus Springfield XD. He wrote, very detailed, great video. I'm looking at purchasing my first handgun and everyone's saying go with a Glock. 
but I'm hearing good things about the XD. We'll see how it goes. Well, Theodore, we, we hope that we help clarify things. Um, whatever decision you make, it's going to be a great one. I recommend that go with whatever fits best in your hand. Um, I tell everybody, it's not about the brand, it's about the fit. And if you go with that, you'll be fine. Um, next one goes out to RBT. And he really liked our uh, video on tips for loading magazines. He says, I couldn't get the last round in my new Springfield XD10. So I got the Magalula, and it's awesome. I've been a revolver owner, but never had a mag. No one ever showed me. So thanks for the video. RBT, that's why we're here. We're educational in our basis. We want to help everybody learn. We want to help everybody uh, get the best experience that they can. And if we can show you a few tricks, life is good. That's why we're here. Anyway, on behalf of the channel, uh, I'm Ed Thorell from Shooter the Series, Firearms Education and Training. Y'all take care.